Swap complete. Welcome to disassembly of the Red Fiero. This first part, I'm going to start off by pulling all the body panels off. We're going to pull the trunk, the roof section, the cores, and the rear bumper, taillights. I want to get the whole body off the back end of this thing and set that aside, and then we'll drop the uh, cradle assembly out. So, I have big plans. I'll explain those later, but for right now, Let's just start taking it apart. Well, got the main clip off. That was a real pain. Let's take a look at it over here. Luckily, I already had like all that uh, interior stuff apart from earlier. Yeah, it's kind of windier today. Um, yeah, there's like studs sticking up on the bottom of this thing. Those guys right there. So this part has to raise up a little bit in order for it to come off and uh, turns out there's little plastic rivets in the wheel wells that are holding on in a couple spots right there and one over there somewhere so I have to make sure to get all those out and then the wiring for the taillights was clipped into the very back there so even taking the bolts out Got to take care of all 5,000 clips in this thing. All I really need to do is save what I need for my swap, and the rest of this stuff can kind of be just hacked out of here. And then just take the bolts out for the cradle. Instead of using the crane, I'm just going to jack on either side with two jacks and see if between that and using stands, I can get this thing high enough to get this thing out. Right now, the cradle is unbolted, and... Aside from unbolting the cradle, I then have to unbolt the strut towers, which I've done on both sides here. So now all that's left is just like the hoses and wiring and all that kind of junk. So I'm going to go ahead and start lifting and start taking things out as they appear, basically. Uh, I think that's just going to be easiest because I really don't want to dig in here as any more than I have to because it's pretty gross. So, and most of the stuff I'm not keeping... Um, or even if it's a part I need, I'll probably get a new one. So, yep, gonna go with that method. So, let's see how this goes. Iron Duke out. Red Fero Bear. Hold on. Look how neat! Oh 
Okay, update time. I've lengthened the frame by 10 inches uh, with these two pipes right here, and I've successfully created one of the three motor mounts. There's this one right here in the back. It kind of bolts in three spots, two on the trans, one on the engine, and it's just got these two studs hanging down. There's one up the front, which is this one right here. Um, it connects to the block and has two studs sticking down just like that one. The last one bolts into these three, but I can't actually hang them out, it won't fit. So this one's gonna be, I think, my most complicated one of the three. This is my mock-up setup. All the welds on here are just temporary. I'm just getting everything placed and the mounts are kinda temporary as well. Uh, there, nothing's clean, nothing's cut exactly to shape or anything like that. This is just getting it put together so that way this can actually mount onto this. And that's gonna then allow me to move all this out of the way. I'm gonna have to move that out of here and then drag the car back in here and then I can start actually fitting this whole mess into the car. Okay, I got the second mount done over there in the corner. Uh, so all that's left is this last one, but I ran out of wild wire. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, shuffling here uh, in order to get everything to be precise and perfect as well as fit it in the car. I'm going to need to work on concrete. So that means I need to take Mitsubishi out. So to do that, I'm going to take the engine out, set it aside, take the cradle out, set it aside, and then we can pull, uh, clean some stuff up, pull Mitsubishi out. And then I'll probably go ahead and bring the Fiero over here. Uh, but I'll put engine and cradle in the garage. And once I get them married pretty much good, uh, then I'll take engine and cradle combination out. And then Fiero will go in. And then engine and cradle will start going in the Fiero once we cut it apart. So... Hopefully you got that. Okay, I got everything lined up. Engine, cradle, car. Uh, car's looking pretty level. So it's now time to chop the back end of the car off uh, so that way we can extend it. So I'm not sure where I'm gonna cut yet. So I'm gonna, gonna spend the next couple hours contemplating, measuring, contemplating, and measuring a whole bunch more times, maybe taking some pieces off that are in the way and figuring out where I want to do that at. And then once this is off, uh, I'll connect the cradle to the car. And with that connected, that's going to help me determine where to place this at and then where to, how to reattach it and all that business. So a whole lot of messery going on right now, but this is where it's at right now. So give me a little bit and I will let you know what I ended up with.
Okay, we have successfully cut up the Hulk after a ton of sawzawing and chopping. I now have my lower frame rail with the strut towers and I kept this brace in here to keep the two connected. Um, I might change that with a better brace or just make it prettier, uh, but for now that keeps those lined up where they are. Uh, this is going to be the top frame rail with all of the uh, body panel mounts and all that stuff and then this is going away trunk and the rest of this trunk here will go away so now we're at the point where I can go ahead and uh, probably should strip a couple more things off of it but uh, go ahead and lift this and prop it up here and see how we're looking so far see what we see Okay, so I now have my subframe mocked up in place, and I have done my initial uh, cutout of my midframe rail with my strut towers. So now I've just got to tack up my, uh, I need to add a frame rail to connect these two points. So I kind of need a box frame rail for that. So what I'm going to do here is I got this uh, toe kick piece from some like 1960s, 70s cabinets or whatever. Uh, they're fairly thick and I've chopped up some of that and I've made these pieces here. So if I take these two, I take each half and put them together there, that will give me my box frame and that's what I'm going to use to add in that MIG section and then if needed plate on both sides but for now we're just going to get it mocked up so once I have that set up in place um, I'll need to attach those permanently enough that I can then remove the subframe so that way it can be welded permanently and uh, finish working on my uh, engine mounts. But then I'm going to need to make a, I want to make a removable bar for across the strut towers. I have this piece in here uh, right now keeping them where they need to be. I have this bar from the uh, Cadillac that if I you know, chop these welds, shorten it, put it back together, I can make that my strut bar and that can bolt on to the strut towers. Uh, so that way the engine can then be removed from the top instead of the bottom because that is just such a mess. So I'm gonna need, once all this other stuff is done, I'm gonna need to install this and then once this is installed then I can cut this out and get it out of the way and then uh, with this being welded up right there and this being bolted in you could then remove this these strut tires will they'll, they'll lean in a little bit but then you could you know pull and install the engine and then you can reinstall this just by pulling these strut towers back a little bit and getting it to line up with its bolt holes. And it will put the strut towers in the same place each time. So that's my plan for that. And yeah, so a lot of work to do still. Back to what I'm doing at hand. I gotta clean these up, weld them all together, and then get them welded on the car. So. Well, let's go. A couple big things happened. I got the whole top frame section mostly ready and I got it bolted to the uh, subframe 
and went ahead and threw the motor in here. However, this is a little bit deceiving. There's actually a lot still needing to happen before we can move on to fun stuff. Uh, I need to raise uh, and add a, some kind of type of bushing uh, at this engine mount uh, because one, it won't sit low enough to actually reach it. Two, it needs a little isolation. And three, uh, because of that, it's sitting so low that this pulley here is just kind of sitting right on the frame there. So, need to modify that a little bit. And then we still have the engine mount for this side to do. So, it's only being held by the one engine mount at the moment and the jack. Uh, I did add the strip bar. I don't have my permanent fasteners for it yet. Uh, and I also still need to remove the rest of this. And I want to add some uh, bracing, uh, probably shooting cross down this way and probably shooting down cross that way. Uh, probably not going to get to that right now. Uh, we'll probably do that after the engine runs. So we'll look out for that later. Right now, I want to do everything it takes to get this to at least run even on a can of brake clean. I don't care. I want to hear it run just because that will be so much more motivating. Once I have that, I will feel a whole lot better about this project and then I can go on to start actually making it a little bit better and maybe even make some permanent parts for the blue car later. Because this is the don't give a single rat booty car. Okay. I got this mount over here put together, which, yeah, if I can get a view, yep, there's two bolts, two nuts there, and straight up, oh, I keep fucking there, straight up, but hey, we do what we want around here, it'll work for a test car here, <coughs> and now, we have achieved the clearance I need under that. You could even pull the belt off if you need to, which is perfect. So, with that being said, uh, technically you need to do the mounts on that side, but I really want to just hear it run for even a split second. So, uh, I think I'm going to bring my wiring harness bins over here and start figuring out how to rough wire this thing enough to make it wah, for even just a moment. Ain't that just meant to be? Where the battery terminal sit on the Cadillac is exactly where the battery sits in the Fiero. That's just perfect. Just meant to be. Here's one of many reasons why not to put a North Star in any car ever, and that is the amount of wiring. This is the computer here. This is a ginormous fuse box and just look how thick this harness is. That's just the engine side of the harness. There's also an entire bin for the interior side as well. Just look at all that wiring everywhere. And of course, the digital dash, which I managed to crack the plastic part anyway. So, yep, gonna try to use all this stuff. Mm hmm. Fun times. <sighs> Let's get to work. Okay, so it's been two days later, and I'm now doing a ton of hack job wiring, which I'm about to show you. And though there is just massacres amount of wiring everywhere, it's actually not so bad as it seems. In particular, this car, uh, part of what makes it a little bit easier is getting around the theft system. This is a 99 DeVille, and it's the last year that the DeVille used VATS, which VATS is an anti-theft system 
that kind of came about. I think Corvette was the first one that had it, and then other cars uh, took it on. So early C4 Corvettes had it, and then other cars had it all throughout the 90s. And what it is is the uh, little resistor pellet chips that are in keys. That's how that kind of started. And it started, there was only like 15 different ones or something like that. So it was actually really, really easy to get around uh, in the early years. And they started adding a whole lot more. But just the the way that it works makes it really easy to get around even aside from the key part. Because VATS does two things. It disables the starter and it disables fuel. And how it does those two things and just the fact that it only does those two things makes it pretty easy to get around, especially in this case where I'm working with a swap project. So starter, all it does is have a special starter relay that takes an additional signal from the gauge cluster, uh, which is what's uh, controlling whether or not it's clear or not. And that will send a signal down to there and say, hey, theft system, says everything's good, and that signal wire will then trigger, and that allows the relay to switch, and therefore start the starter. So all you have to do is just jump that, or cut out the relay and add your own. Either one, boom. Um, so starter, simple. The second thing it does is shut down the fuel pump, which again, you can just jump at the relay. So it's really not a very effective system aside from it is pretty easy to bypass the actual key part as well if you're working on the actual car but in this case where i'm doing a swap project neither of those things really bother me at all because i'm already going to be adding a whole bunch of electrical so adding a new relay for the starter whoop de doo i'm not using the fuel pump from the devel so again it really doesn't matter so Late last night, I had this thing wired up, uh, wired up enough to run, and I went ahead and just poured some gas in it and let it fire, and that ended in disaster, so I'll show you that clip now. <laughs> um, but after I show you this clip, uh, I'm then going to come back, and we're going to go ahead and test fire it again today with some spray can, and hopefully it'll work a little bit better. This only backfired in my face a little bit. But hey, it runs though. Okay, so this is what we got for wiring. I have the steering column and the gauge cluster just here, just to make it easier for now. Uh, I'm keeping as much DeVille wiring and stock stuff here for now until I know exactly what all I need and what I don't need and all that jazzy business. So uh, there's a power wire coming off the battery, one goes straight to the alternator and one goes right here. And this lead right here powers all these maxi fuses. It powers the whole fuse box. That's how that works. Um, and then power is then distributed. There is these, all these fuses right here, these big maxi ones, they are on all the time. And then these ones over here, they are switched on. Uh, using relays once the uh, ignition key is turned. So, uh, I mean, it's it's pretty standard wiring. And then in this car, uh, the way it works is there's uh, black with white stripe wires, and those are ground distribution throughout the whole vehicle. There is these uh, thin, plain orange wires. That's power distribution throughout the whole vehicle. And then there's thin purple wires, and that's going to be your data connections all throughout the vehicle. And then uh, the rest of your wiring is going to be each individual um, item. So it's pretty simple to get through, actually. So 
right now all I have is ignition and I do have my uh, screen oh camera's getting all fuzzy Let's see if I can clean that up a little better um, I do have this cluster lighting up solid but currently it's stuck in uh, theft mode at the moment uh, I don't think I have my data connection uh, connected to that and I also don't have it connected to uh, this either I got power to this but I haven't got data yet so I still got those two things to do but for now it is wired enough that we can and I hot wire the uh, starter relay here and we should be able to get some noise for a moment anyway so this will be what I was talking about there's uh, yellow wire which is your hey the transmissions in park you're good wire there's the red wire hot all the time uh, there's the purple wire which is what goes to the starter and then there's this yellow with black stripe wire and that's that signal uh, from that gauge cluster so all you have to do is either power that wire or just power the purple wire which is what I've been doing and voila you have starter so that's what I'm gonna do if you do not have any kind of power probe I recommend you get that because that makes this easier I'm hoping my battery's charged enough so we'll see but uh, let's hook some stuff up here have to double connect on here Whoop. connect you connect my probe yep you can hear it ah try not to trip Ugh. okay so just as example if I poke this you can see it has ground and if I press up it'll give it power and you'll hear it crank if it has battery yep see there you go so all we gotta do is give it some fire and we'll see what happens and I'll go ahead and set this right down over here Well, I hope you enjoyed my suffering to some extent. I think that's enough excitement for this video, so we're going to go ahead and save it for a future video, the rest of whatever you call this mess. Uh, I'm really excited about this project because it's the first time that I've started working on uh, my Fiero in four or five years, something like that. So pretty cool even though I'm not technically working on my actual car I'm just working on this freebie car but it's one step closer you know and that's all one can do is just keep making little bits of progress here and there at a time so and as always don't forget to like comment subscribe especially comment and if you do not know anything about what's going on here at this channel, well, go back through some of the videos that I've posted previously, and they may have some of the answers you might be looking for. If you don't have an answer, then, again, comment. I am here to respond. So, enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you on the next episode.